Hey guys, what's up? Uh, I'd like to share this uh, special excitement and moment for you because for the first time I broke my record on chess.com. Maybe for someone it's nothing, for me it's pretty good. Uh, I broke the barrier and uh, record of 2850 and it is especially uh, get crazy and uh, special when you do that against X fifth player in the world. His name is Grandmaster Mikhail Grovich, Belgium guy who was ex-Ukrainian and Russian champion, as well as second of Wishiana and the guy who used to play and beat Kasparov Karpov and all these uh, famous guys. Anyways, uh, I just met him tonight. We just played a game and he was a legendary French, a French opening player and English player. So, how did the game go? The game was uh, played on chess.com tonight and he went for his favorite c4 opening. Against any c4 I always play e5 and against knight c3 I was hoping that he would go with third move g3 in which case I go with the reversed Sicilian uh, where I play d5. He won for knight f3 so I played knight c6 and when he played a3 this is just one of the options. First of all, I have to apologize for my rough voice. Uh, I don't feel the best. I had some cold. Altogether with cold, I was singing on one wedding and birthday. So that's what happens uh, when you're not good enough. So along with many moves here, d4, d3, e3, e4, g3, he opted for a3. This is a typical move where he at some point wants to first of all stop bishop b4 with some uh, sort of uh, reverse Raza Lima as well as he wants to go with a typical b4 very characteristic for an English opening. Anyways I went for g6 and I was hoping he was gonna go with g3 and go into the uh, some of the main lines of the English opening. He went for that g3 bishop g7 castles castles I played d6, he played d3, and I very much hate when they want to do bishop g5 at this point. And I said, no, that's not going to happen. I'm not going to let it happen, and I'll just go with h6. He went with b4, and I was pretty much aware of the fact that he wants to push this pawn up to b5. So I played a6. He went rook b1, and I played bishop e6. My idea behind bishop e6 is to go queen d7. Take a look at the time. He spent 10 seconds. I spent 12 seconds, which means that we both knew uh, what were we doing. Uh, he played a4. I played queen d7, and I like this battery because at some point I just like to place my bishop on h3 and kind of weaken him on the light squares. After b5, I captured, he recaptured, and I put my knight back on e7. Uh, guys, if you're not sure what this is, this is close Sicilian reversed. Like, I'm playing the close Sicilian, but I'm down the tempo. He went for 92, threatened the pawn on b7, and I just had to anticipate his bishop and soften its activity with c6. He played rook e1, which is one of the main moves here, because anytime you play bishop h3 with the idea of exchanging the light square bishops, he just goes back. Then I went with knight g4, and my point of the knight g4 was to go finally with f5 and f4 and to create some attack. Lately, I've won so many nice games using these ideas to attack, and uh, during the analysis of this game, I just show you what I do in these positions. So, after knight f3, f5, uh, what was the point of knight f3? He wanted to jump with this knight on e4 and to play at some point, if I play f5, some knight g5 trapping up my bishop. But I played f5 just in time. He played queen c2. That's a smart move. Uh, controlling, you know, first of all, connecting these rooks on the back rank. And uh, fighting against d4. Uh, the point is, uh, lately, uh, I played some games with bishop b2. And uh, when that happens, for example, in a couple of games... Uh, I went with something like, for example, uh, g5, rook a1, rook b7, rook a7. And when this rook comes there, 
you can just go with, for example, e4. That's how I played a couple of games. And then you just go with this, then you take and you kill them. So a couple of guys played against me like this, and then you just have an upper hand. For example, take a look at this one, bishop d4, and he can stop losing the rook on a7 or checkmate. This e4 is one of the crucial things. That's why I believe that his move, uh, queen, C, queen c2, was pretty much to the point in this game. Uh, now, unfortunately, I just lost the game. So let me just get the game back. So let me just find it. I gotta apologize for this. Let me just find the game. So this is the game. He played with the 80% of preciseness in the game while I did with 89%. So let's once again go with these moves. Uh, go into the position that I previously analyzed with you. And after 97, 92, c 6 rookie 1, bishop h3, knight g4, knight f3, f5. By the way, I'm threatening e4 to win the piece on c3. He goes with queen c2. And when he goes with queen c2, now I have a lot better... Uh, I don't have any more e4 ideas, but I just wanted to go with rook f7 and try to double up my rooks. He went with the bishop g2. And all of a sudden, he felt uh, kind of, you know, like in danger. As soon as they played these kinds of moves, you just know that they're afraid of your attack. I captured and played rook f8. I'm happy as long as I have a game like this where I managed to trade off the light square bishops. And now I just want to go with e4. Uh, he went with h3. Clever move. You know, just kicking my knight away. I brought my knight back to f6 and he played b takes, b takes and bishop b2. Engine doesn't necessarily like this move and I agree. He was supposed to play c5. That was way better to kind of break my pawns in the center, but the game would still be roughly equal. After he played bishop b2, I played g5. I'm slowly but surely getting ready for some breaks with knight g6. Uh, this is my idea. And then I want to go with g4. He played rook e1 knight g6 and played rook a6. I played knight h5. This is a, a tricky move because I realized that I want to jump with one of my knights on f4, stacking it and going with the queen h3 at some point. How was I going to do that? I really don't know. But that was just my idea. Probably I had some better ideas, uh, including g4. Gurevich went for queen a4. I played e4. I like this move because I'm taking advantage of his inability to take on e4. Played 92, and that's what majority of these guys do. I captured on d3, and for example, uh, Engine doesn't necessarily like this move. Uh, Engine says play f4. Maybe even knight f4 could work. But I saw something, and that's why I went for it. I captured, and when he captured, I went with f4. My initial thought and idea was that if he plays g4, what I was expecting here, and look at his pieces, somehow uh, his pieces look like incomplete i don't want to say disharmony but somehow all his pieces are on the right side of the board well all my pieces are on the left side of the board against this king i got a mate here. so he went for g4 i played f3 this is a very important uh intermediary move because i want to jump with one of these knights on f4 he played king f1 and i was very happy when i jumped here now i want to jump with the knight on e5 uh, now I want to take on h3. I want to take on d3. He captured. And here probably in my style I should have uh, maybe gone with some queen d8 keeping the queens on the board. But I just saw a very simple way to win. I took on d3 threatening both. Rook on e1 and bishop on b2. Played knight f4. Uh, and he was absolutely collapsing here. He went with rook d6. I captured the bishop. Now the knight was hanging. Put my rook on the A file, and when he, of course, I was threatening mate, and when he played this one, I came up with check, and he resigned. He resigned due to the fact that if he plays knight e1, I would just play knight d3, and he can't stop mate on e1. Well, uh, from now on, I'm gonna make almost on daily basis uh, some videos. Uh, hope that you like this one, and once again, guy who was fifth in the world was for a couple of years 
uh, in top 10 in the world, guys who's a famous coach, uh, ex-Ukrainian and Russian champion. And now I break my record in chess.com with 2850. More of these uh, GM's games to come. And hopefully you enjoyed the analysis and now you just even learn how to cope and to play against the English attack and to attack them on the king's side. Thanks, enjoy, and once again, sorry for my rough voice. Bye-bye.